Uh, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. I'm just sitting down having breakfast right now. It's like 7.30 in the morning. Most typical Matt Sheldon breakfast ever. We got a cup of coffee with some cream, three eggs over medium, two veggie sausage patties, a nectarine, and a big glass of water. To be honest, I haven't been in the best mood for the last three, four days this whole week pretty much just because of how the team's kind of been performing. He's gonna run at Sheldon. Chang cuts in. Chang, Ariaga, Ariaga to Hermon! Damian Hermon! Blake's gonna step up to take it. Blake, shot, goal! Finding Ariaga, back to Coffee. Coffee inside the box, cut back. Coffee shot, deflection still in the area. Headed on goal! Inside the box to Jake Black, Jack Blake off the woodwork. Chang! You know, being at the bottom of the table, uh, it just takes a lot out of you. Losing takes is very tiring, and I've just been feeling like that. Just frustrated, tired, and all that stuff. So, yeah, it hasn't been the best week for me. And it's hard because I am pretty good at getting over losses, and I am really good at getting over bad performances, and I you know, give myself a 24-hour window to really dwell on the loss, dwell on my performance. Um, I watch the film, I review, I learn, uh, but then, after that, after the 24 hours, I really try to move on completely and just I'm like whatever, new week, new training, let's get on, let's be happy, let's go and, and get better. But when it's week after week after week after week, I mean, we haven't won since April. I mean, that's hard. Every single week, you, your frustration kind of just builds up and up and up and it takes a little bit longer and longer to recover from the loss. And this week in particular, I just think because we just had a really bad game in, in terms of how our team played, um, I think that's why it just like kind of like hit me hard, harder than normal. So uh, I dwelled on it for sure for 24 hours. Um, I've watched the game twice already. It's Thursday, so it's like four or five days after the game. Um, I moved on from it, but I still have those feelings of like frustration and everything. So, so I'm gonna eat this breakfast right now. We got training in about an hour and a half, and yeah, it's a very typical day today. So the plan for today is to do the normal head of the facilities, do the normal prehab routine, do the normal training session. After the training session, I think I'm gonna grab lunch with a couple teammates at like First Watch, which is like a breakfast brunch place. And then after that, I've been really wanting to do like a mobility session, yoga, um, and some uh, foam rolling and just some general stuff like that. So I'll probably do that later. I'll take you guys along with that. And uh, then pretty much just uh, the rest of the day is kind of packing and get, getting ready for the trip because we leave tomorrow to go to Austin, Texas. So that's pretty much the, the plan for today. And then other than that, it's kind of funny. I was talking to some old teammates about, you know, every time you head into postseason um, and you head into off season, everybody's thinking about what their plan is for next year because here in the U.S., especially in lower divisions, the USL and other lower divisions around the world, you're not on five-year contracts, you're not on three-year contracts you're usually just on a nine month contract. So at the end of every nine months, you literally have to sit down with your agents, sit down with the coaches, sit down with everybody, and figure out if you're gonna come back next year or if you're gonna head somewhere else. Um, and so it's, it's always a little stressful. So uh, a lot of people kind of talk about, you know, retirement or they talk about if they can't find a team, what they're gonna do, what their backup plans are, what their goals are, stuff like that. Um, I'm interested, I literally am just kind of like, yeah, just keep on playing well and just hopefully some good opportunity will come up either here or somewhere else. But it always it always does get you thinking about like, you know, you know, in the back of your head, oh, what if I can never find a team? What if I can, this is my last year. It always is like that. Um, and so I was thinking about it, like thinking about retirement and obviously I don't want to retire yet. I still feel like I have, you know, my best seasons are yet to come. Um, but I, would, I almost thought to myself, it would be cool to do a video and kind of like have a message to my retired self. So that's the point of this video as well as just a normal vlog. It's really kind of like um, some short messages I want to give to myself when I really decide that it is time for me to retire, which hopefully isn't for a while. Okay, so just before I head out to training, I want to give that first message to future Matt, future retired Matt. 
um, and that first message would be about my body and, and it would really be that I hope you pushed your body to the absolute limit of what it was capable of. I really hope that every single day you try to become a better athlete, become a better player, and that you really feel like that you reached your potential. Having said that though, I really hope that you're smart about everything. Um, because I do you know one day I want to pick a ball around and play with my kids in the grass I want to be able to move and not be crippled So I hope that you balance that out of pushing your body to the absolute limit while also Recognizing that you do have a future after your career and to be smart about it <laughs> It's kind of funny even having said that like I really do think I have pushed my body all really hard already I mean, I've, I've had three surgeries and um, tendonitis and a whole bunch of other issues, but I, I still think that you know, there's more, I can give more, I can give more. So Matt, future Matt, I hope that you have given more, I hope that you've pushed yourself really far, but um, I hope that you can still live a normal life after, you know, in retirement. So that's, that's message number one. I'm gonna head out to training right now. I'm just getting back from lunch and coffee with those guys. Uh, we were out there for like three hours just hanging out, just talking and everything. Um, but number two, the number two message I would have for my retired self is that I really hope that I enjoyed the moment and I really lived in the moment every single day. Because when you're going through this every single season, um, trainings can get repetitive, the workouts can get repetitive, everything can get repetitive about your day-to-day -day life. And it's really easy to take being a professional soccer player for granted. And I hope that you know every single season that I'll play in, that I have always go to every single training and I'm excited to be there. I'm excited, whether my body's hurt, whether you know I'm sore, whether I'm tired, that I don't take it for granted that I get to play soccer every single day, that working out and training and playing this game was my job. Oh. All right, so as usual, um, neither of these, I don't think, yeah, neither of these are sponsored. So I didn't get any money for them, they just sent them to me. Let's open this up. Okay, so first, this is the Palo Cam. Now, the really, the only way to really show this is actually to use it. Um, so what I will do is in a separate video later down the road, I will actually show the use of this. But this is a camera that you can, I'll put it over the screen right now. But this is a camera, you, there's a magnet and you put it on this, like a light pole at a, a, at a field, and you can dr literally drive it up the pole to a high spot so it can get a good angle of your training sessions, of your games, and everything. Because usually, you know, when you're recording on a tripod or someone's holding the camera, it's at right at the field level, and you don't get the best angles, it's hard to see, especially if you're at the far side of the field. But this, it, it's such a cool idea, and I'm really, really excited to, to test it out. But yeah, this is gonna be cool. I'm really excited to test it out. So unfortunately, uh, I have a game in two days. We're leaving tomorrow, so I, it's not like I'm gonna go to, go to the training field right now and test this out in the hot sun. But I'm really excited to test out the Apollo Cam. Um, thank you for sending that to me. I will test this out. Oh, he sent me a little letter too. Um, yeah, the world's first pole climbing camera for sports analysis is here. That's awesome. Next, this next thing. From my main man, Sheldon Tweedy. So this is from Sheldon Tweedy. If you guys don't know Sheldon Tweedy, he is a YouTuber, basically doing a path to pro. Um, 
vlogs all the time. I've trained with him a few times in the past and he came out with these new step socks, which is awesome. These are just like grip socks and they're very, they're very sticky already. I have true socks and I wear true socks every single day in training. Um, and these things have been falling off. So we'll see how these compare to them. But these, the actual sticky bottom feels stickier than the true socks bottom. So I'll try them all. I'm gonna try one pair right now. Fits good. It's definitely grippy. So that's the sock, the steps logo on the back, the grip on the bottom. There's the front steps. Sheldon, thank you for saying, he sent out a ton, holy crap. One, two, he sent out four pairs of socks. Two black, two white. Awesome. I am gonna wear these in my training sessions because my true socks are kind of falling apart already. I got those like a couple months ago and I'll let you guys know what I really think of them, but that's pretty exciting. And then he also sent uh, resistance bands. So it goes easiest, second easiest, third, fourth, fifth. All right, let me try these out. But in the next video, I will fully test these step socks out and give a full review. And I will fully test out this Polo Cam and uh, see how it works and everything. Now, before I lose motivation, I wanna do a little yoga session, a little mobility session, foam rolling, all that normal stuff because I've been feeling tight over the last week or two. I've really been pushing it, you know, playing in the game. So quick little stretching, quick little mobility session for like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then we'll go on, move on to the next part of the day. So real, real quick and easy, like 25 minutes of mobility work. It's crazy how much better you really do feel afterward. Just like range of motion, tightness is definitely gone. Um, I've talked about this in some Instagram posts, but flexibility is not the most important thing when it comes to injury prevention. So a lot of people think that. They think that if you wanna prevent injuries, it's all about stretching, stretching, stretching. Really preventing injuries is about a good strength training program or some sort of resistance program that you're building and you're keeping your muscles strong and in balance. If you're doing that, that's like the main part of, of not getting injured. Obviously you can get flukes, you can get bad ankle sprains, you can get um, just dead legs, or you can just get really unlucky sometimes, but mainly preventing injuries is a good balanced strength training program to keep everything strong. Stretching mobility really helps you feel looser, range of motion, stuff like that. But that's just something that a lot of people are a little confused with. Um, so let's see, what time is it right now? It is 6.15 in the evening. I am probably gonna cook in like an hour or so. I'll probably watch some TV, maybe edit this vlog a little bit, get some work done. Um, but yeah, I'm um, pretty good. Oh, message. The third message that I'd really want from my retired self is that I hope you can look back at every season and every city and every country uh, as a positive experience. You can take something from every single season, whether you know you didn't have a great season or you had an awesome season, you're learning, you're developing, and you're growing as a player and as a human. And then even speaking off the pitch, I hope that you develop some great friendships and had some amazing experiences and can really look back on everything and just really enjoyed your time being a professional soccer player, traveling and meeting hundreds of people from all over the world. Okay, so for dinner, I have some leftover pasta. I'm still full from like lunch, so I'm probably gonna have like half this. This is protein penne pasta, uh, cut up zucchini, and ground turkey. And then the sauce is Alfredo sauce. So message number three was all about positive things that I could take out from being on the team. But message number four to my future 
uh, retired self is that I hope that every single season, every single team, that you gave something positive to that team, to that experience, and to your teammates. I hope that every single training session, every single workout in the gym, every single game that you gave 100% effort and you left it all on the field, on the track, or in the gym so that your teammates benefited and that and your team and your city benefited from you being there. And I hope as a team aspect that you really enjoyed being in that environment and that your teammates enjoyed you being in that environment, that you cherished the wins together, you grew from the losses together, and that overall it was a positive experience for your coaches, for your teammates, and for the fans that you were part of that club. So I'm just like charging all the electronics for tomorrow and I plug in my computer and I'm looking at my charger and Gucci chewed up my charger. See that? Focus. Focus on this. Oh, speak of the devil. What's up, Gucci? <laughs> yeah, don't chew on this. So I'm gonna run at Best Buy, pick up another Apple charger, which is probably like 60 bucks or something. Thanks, Gooch. To be honest, um, I'm really, really happy we kept Gucci. Like, I, I make fun of Gucci and I always pretend like to mess with, with her. And I just gotta have to figure out over the next however many years I play and where if I bounce around, you know, how we're gonna take that cat. Cause I, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, next year I could be playing in Sweden. I could be playing in New Zealand again. I, I have no idea. So, um, just gotta figure that out. But I have family that loves cats. Mimi has got a family that loves cats. So we'll figure it out. We'll take care of her until uh, Mimi and I can finally settle down. Got it. And it was only $80. <laughs> so everything I said about Gucci, I changed my mind. I'm gonna get rid of that cat now. Look at this, it's 8.30 at night and it's 95 degrees outside. What the heck? It's about 9.30 at night, I'm about to brush my teeth, just get ready for bed and then pass out in the bed. We, we don't leave tomorrow until like 8.30 in the morning. So it's not that early of a wake up call. We can sleep in a little bit, get some good breakfast and then we leave for the airport and hopefully, hopefully have a good trip in Austin, hopefully win. Um, but the last message I wanna give to my future retired self is that I hope you can push on to the next stage with the same passion that I had as a professional soccer player. I hope that I bring that passion, bring that work ethic, and bring everything that I was doing as a pro and turn that and push that into the next stage of Become Elite and the next stage of my life. Because I have some very big plans for Become Elite. You know, I really envision Netflix style documentaries about that training facility that I want to create, an academy system to really train players to become pros. I want better and better videos, better quality videos constantly, constantly. I want to hire people to work for me to help me with the vlogs and help me with the Instagram page and just provide the most value I possibly can to anybody that wants to become a pro. Um, so I hope that my future retired self follows up on all those dreams and ambitions that I have right now. And I hope that you keep on pushing and working as hard as I'm doing right now. But having said that, I hope that you also enjoy the retired life. You know, re enjoy the retired life from professional soccer, you know, hang out with friends and family, enjoy time with Mimi, enjoy time if I have kids at that point, enjoy time with my kids, enjoy the little things in life, you know, like being able to go out and grab a beer on a Monday night and not worry about training the next morning, or being able to eat or go on vacation when I want to. Um, and really just enjoy kind of the retired life and kind of relax a little bit, but yet also push on to something bigger and better and continue just building up Become Elite as best I can. So those are my five messages or five hopes for my future retired self. So far in my career, I really think I've, I've done them all. So I just hope if I even play one more season, five more seasons or, or 10 more seasons, I hope that I continue to follow um, those and those hopes and messages I have for my future self. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be the end of the video. I'm gonna go to bed, pass out. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.